Once upon a time, 10 years ago, social media promised to shrink our big, lonely world into a cozy digital village. Then AI jumped up and now, it's all about cracking algos and gaming systems. We gone from heart to heart chats to a divisive, high tech game of who can fool the machine best. And one of the most deceptive platforms, LinkedIn with 25% of its traffic estimated to be bots. Daniel Hall is doing something about it. Tell me a little bit about what got you into Spotapod. Um, specifically, what drove you to sort of jump in there and really do the work you do and give us some background on what Spotapod does. I'm a technology guy. How can I figure out this vanity thing? And I did. I created a solution for vanity metrics called Peekaboo. And it calculates how much time we're spending together in social media comments, which is far more graceful than, you know, 10 comments or a hundred million, whatever. This person just spent 10 hours out of their life over the course of 2022, making it about your content. They're never going to get that time back. They invested their life to make it about you. This is why you're successful. But then on the flip side of that, I got to see and discover the dark side of LinkedIn, which is, hey, these comments are, can't be real. What is going on here? And I started digging deeper into pods and more so into the automated AI version of these. Um, platforms like LemPod, Podawag, Hyperclapper, all of them, and this was back in 2020, and I would see some LinkedIn blue badges. You know, I, I don't think they were LinkedIn blue badges at the time, but I saw people become LinkedIn blue badges, building their thrones on using pods. I'm like, this isn't right. Come on. So I started amassing a huge database of just creators. And so I started doing more research and just started joining pods, thousands, private, public, on all these different pod platforms, automated, you name it, and just started calling out people because I knew they can't do anything about it. They would have to prove that they're not in a pod at all, whether it's a manual pod, any type of pod, and they would have to prove that they're not gaming the system. And if I can do something about that, if I can help others see what I see, that will help put the human back in humanity. And every day, AI talking bots replace human connections on social. Lunio estimates that 25% of LinkedIn's traffic are bots. Many are part of what is known as pods. When Daniel Hall saw his feet filled with people gaming to get seen, he took action with Spotapod. Now, a LinkedIn AI pod is a tool designed to boost engagement and visibility for LinkedIn posts through automations, using AI to simulate human-like engagement, many done by fake followers. And the only thing protecting us from this is a over 25-year-old law used by big tech to ignore this. And we'll expose this at the end. We talk about ignorance is bliss. I'm Declan Dunn, helping entrepreneurs, small businesses, and creatives use AI to their advantage. And in episode 62 of the AI Optimist, LinkedIn's fake followers, how 25% AI bots are flooding your feed. We're going to talk about the algo gaming that dominates social, which might seem like a nothing burger to some. To my audience, it's them from being seen, from growing their business. Now, Spotapod creator Daniel Hall is a platform data analytics guru, a proud adoptive dad of seven, and he's helping put the human back in humanity. He helps you flush your feed of fake connections and shines a light on the underworld of pods. Let's dive into his human attempt to stop the AI bots take over. So I noticed on several of the posts, I would go back to them and then they would delete all the things you pointed out down the road. So now that it's not 
I won't say provable, but it doesn't look like what you pointed yeah. out. Yeah. And how do you sort of deal with that? Not just denial, but the weird ability of them to just go into that one post and just <laughs> read all the big comments. But there's a reason why I don't tag creators when I initially do the post. That Because I don't want to alert them to the fact that, hey, I'm calling you out. And when I do that, what happens, the, the process is they'll look at the post. They're like, oh, crap. I got to go delete, 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 delete. There's a the proof. It's gone. This post is gone. That post is gone. The posts, all the five posts that Dan just put there, they're gone. I don't want real people to really laugh at people because this is a mental health thing. It really oh, is. People is. are going in and some people are being tricked. I've called out people that maybe have been, been tricked or duped into joining pods. So for me to, for me to laugh at something like that, that's not fair. And that's not fair to those people that have been building their brands and now they're being put into pods and I'm calling those people out because this other company put them into pods. That's not fair to the creators that are actually trying to do it authentically, but are getting duped and paying lots of money to be able to, to look like they're making it. But it's, it's the end of the day. I don't play favorites and I don't, you know, if I see it in a pod, especially if you have a big following and you got a LinkedIn blue badge, you're probably on my radar. And if you're gaming the system, because most of the time, and I, LinkedIn blue badges in the, for me have become a watermark of deception on LinkedIn, but there hmm. are some LinkedIn blue badges that are just incredibly kind people. So yeah. it's still up to us to do our homework and get to know those people have connected human conversations with those LinkedIn blue badges and be fair to them. And, and they hmm. are, I, I like what you say about them getting duped because I hear that a lot that an agency goes in and says, right? That they can get them the numbers and they can, but how do you get it? And like most people don't even understand this. This is an example that you shared of the various um, comments mm -hmm. that were available. Where, where did you get this? Was this with, from within so, a pod or? Yeah, this is within a pod. So I do a, a part of my background is in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to sniff traffic. So what that means is I look at every facet of data that goes from my computer out to the internet and whatever comes from the internet back into my computer. So if I navigate to a post on one of these pod platforms that was had a request for engagement, this is what mm -hmm. I get back on my machine. I can see that this person requested these the, the creators to use these comments. And wow. I'll break it down. I'll take one of the comments. Your musings are a journey into the realm of the mind. And then they use macros, which pulls in the first name of the creator that has the post. What if my posts, the, the things that I posted were fake news about mm -hmm. how somebody was a committed of treason? Yeah. And I had somebody drop a comment that supported that all of a sudden I've just it, it, simply by making them say what I want them to say, I've completely just destroyed their brand or they're going to be looked at by the federal government and seen as probably a traitor. It's so easy to do that. I do. I did this with a free account, a free account. Well, it you know, freaked me out as you shared one of these from somebody when the um, October 7th Israeli Hamas attack happened. Mm -hmm. well, what was really frightening to me is that's really, okay, this is his view, which obviously is very binary mm -hmm. um, with deep respect to both sides. But if you were to comment in his pod, it was all extremely pro-Israel comments. Yes. So it was, again, political speak hidden behind this thing that most people just like we don't read the terms of service right we're yeah. probably don't even read the comments you just assume they're fine and there is a danger in there of how people can not only abuse this but 
really um, do some really subversive things that yes. almost aren't even looked at by the platforms. And we'll get into that a little later because I have my own theory of why the platforms never do anything about any of this. Uh, Mike, I won't say any of it, but it has to be pretty egregious for them to take yeah. a comment. This is an example you shared, which shows a, a number of the exact same posts being done. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting? Well, those those are the same comments, same comments. Same on comments. One, sorry, one one single post, same comments. This is what we were talking about just a few moments ago with the German uh, influencer. I notice with, and I'll get to a later example of with posts. But I notice sometimes, obviously, people don't have much influence in a good way, so they don't get the likes. But there's always a discrepancy. Like some people would get a lot of likes to their comments, mm-hmm. like. And most people would get sort of crickets, maybe one or two. Is there sort of a gaming to like like your comments as well? Like to give them, because that amplifies, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. on the LinkedIn algorithm, getting a lot of likes on your comments is going to make you look pretty good. Is that another one of those indicators we might look at for, you know, using a pod or oh, yeah. gaming sort of social media? Yeah. So you can target, um, like I can go in and target any, I can target your account, for example for and your posts for any type of engagement really i don't have to own your account i can i can say okay i want to automatically respond react to declan's comments and if you get multiple people doing that it is i mean that's just the pod the pod work at its finest ai at its finest just reacting to those comments. And sometimes with this, the, the bots will target. And I think that that one was the, actually the first one, the first comment that was dropped using that particular comment, but you, cause you'll see all the other ones are just onesie twosie. So I'm pretty sure that was the one that, and I highlighted that, That was the first or the earliest comment that used that. Because of that, of the 1 billion LinkedIn users, maybe 250 million are fake accounts? We don't know yet. Daniel found some people duped into using pods. They didn't know what they were like most people, not knowing what he knew. One was asked to create 25 to 30 fake accounts to help her grow on LinkedIn. Now she says no, but what would you say? Daniel says maybe 25% are fake accounts on LinkedIn, meaning you have a one in four chance of dealing with a fake trying to build your business brand. But I can really see the appeal because you want to get not necessarily some validation, but if I go to somebody and say I have 20,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 followers on LinkedIn, they're not even going to care that they're necessarily real followers. Because what's interesting to me is I would imagine in many of those that the fake followers we see from Insta and all the other platforms that are sort of being outed now, or at least cleaned up, I would imagine on LinkedIn, we have maybe not fake ones, but sort of like pages and all these different sort of ways they game the system to put the numbers up. So, I mean, I can understand not even in an ego level, just trying to make your business case. How do we keep away from these sort of hives of unreal people that, you know, are not really there to share the content or actually create it, but to just sort of get big numbers and impress you with their big numbers? Yeah. And here's something that's scary with those big numbers. And I was told by a very, very, very reputable LinkedIn person. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give her name, Michelle Raymond, Michelle J. Raymond. She's from Australia. And hmm. she had told me that she was approached by a creator to be in a pod. And they wanted her to create 25 to 30 fake accounts to drive her business funnel. Now, if you think about that and what these connection king or queen pins are doing, 
Mm-hmm. If you think about that and you take that billion that LinkedIn says that they have and you mm-hmm. knock off 25%, is that the real actual creator count or is a billion? There? <laughs> because a lot of these numbers that we saw in these reactions are probably fake accounts. Probably a quarter of them are fake accounts. What is the incentive, do you think? Because LinkedIn doesn't tend to do very much about anything. Not, I won't say incentive. That's probably too much conjecture. But, you know, as we're looking at this, why wouldn't they do something to stop this? Or is it just sort of a benefit because it creates engagement and the appearance of activity? There's no real answer there. All, yeah. the, all that it's money driven. It has to be. But here's the caveat to that. On October 20th of this year, the FTC is going to come hammering down on creators that are selling or pushing their products and gaming the system doing it. And LinkedIn is right at the very top of this. Social media companies won't just say LinkedIn. Social media companies, at the end of the day, they're at the top. They're the ones that need to police their platforms. Not Dan Hall down here. They're responsible. So if the FTC comes knocking and they're going after creators, who do you think the creators are going to blame for not enforcing their terms of service? what you have to gain by enforcing your rules as opposed to what you have to get, lose by not enforcing them. And I guess we'll find out sooner than later on that. But it's all about the money. It's all about the the True. money. And the numbers. And the numbers. Like... The vanity translates to cash. I mean, I've been in contact with Forbes. I've been in contact with a lot of big media companies. And they just don't want to touch the story because they're well, in bed with with these social media platforms. I don't know if that's the right term to use, but that's all I can come up with. <laughs> but, you know, I have another thing. This is my take on the FTC that sort of bums me out. Because the FTC generally does this, but you need enough. They're very numbers driven, too. So mm-hmm. you need to be making 10, 20, 30 million. I'm making up numbers, but having seen people called out if you're making a hundred thousand or less than a million, they and most of these influencers aren't making that much. I mean, at least speaking. they 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 might be talking about making that much, but if they're <laughs> actually not making that much, then kudos to them if that's what they want to do. But if no, they're... but it's weird because it's such a money. Like if I'm the FTC, I'm so much going to go after the platforms because there is yeah. big dollars, and exactly. it really like. And it's such a, it bothers me because in one sense, wow. And the head of the FTC, Lena Khan, but she is really comes from a business background and she really sees this going on. And if they're really going to deal with deep fakes, but they have to realize where this like infection happens. Because when you let somebody like we're looking at an example here on my screen, my employer resigned. She left to start her own business. This is what I told her. Oh my gosh. Post after post after post of the same sort of content. Because there's one that, that jumps out. If you look at Bridget, who has 4 million followers, um, hers was uh, on this timestamp 17 hours ago. A scroll up or maybe down. Yeah, right there. Miss 14 hours. Ma- yeah. Sethosa. One week ago. That is earlier than Bridget's. So did Bridget actually plagiarize? Because Bridget's post is verbatim of this gal's post, which was one week ago where Bridget's was 17 hours. Now we're we're like four or five days out now. So, and I just did a post about this today, actually about this, because I, I know that we had spoken. I was like, couldn't remember where I saw this, but then I did some digging. And this was really disturbing that Bridget had, and it's verbatim. The only thing that she adds on the end is a one word conundrum. Agree? That was it. That's the only thing that she changed in the post. And look at the engagement and look at the reposts. Crazy. Like, and the thing that got me about this, I was looking at the titles of people doing this. 
Because mm-hmm. this isn't like, I'm used to the scammers just sort of being like a biz op, uh, you know, get rich quick, yada, yada. But there's like military professional, two students, a director of finance, a data Those scientist. Those fake accounts. No, don't, totally. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> really? <laughs> Sorry. I'm laughing no. like how much I want to, because how much of this is HR driven, which would be ingenious to do a fake account. Until finally, now we're going to reveal what big tech is relying on. The DMCA. It's big tech's way to avoid solving the fake follower bot problem. The DMCA is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It was enacted in October 28, 1998 in the Wayback Machine, addressing copyright issues arising from the internet and digital media. It's also used by big tech to let users do what they do, saying we can't regulate them, otherwise we as the platforms would be responsible with some rules. Because if they enforce those rules for everyone, they have to enforce it anytime this happens. And sometimes those fake account numbers, the billions, and fake ads shown to those 25% of bots on LinkedIn, for example, turn vanity into money for the social platforms. Your money. And it is the DMCA is the only real rule. What's happening now is only going to get worse. It's turning social media into artificial engagement. <laughs> AE from AI. Right? Who needs people? Daniel thinks we're missing the point. I think he's got something to share that goes beyond bots and into the hearts of people. We have something called the DMCIA, which is the Digital Millennium Act. Yeah. Millennium Act. And basically, that says that the networks, the Digital Millennial Act, Millennium Act, basically says what we all in early internet started that you don't have to legislate, you don't have to really watch the content because there's too much content. So users are responsible for the content, not the platform. The minute any of these platforms start taking action, the DMCA is gone. You can't take one action and not have to take all of them legally. So it opens up a liability issue. I don't think they want to do it. And it would also make them probably... Numbers would go down. Revenue on on many of these cases, like I can tell you, Facebook ads and Google ads would be decimated if the fake stuff was gone. Like there's just no, it's data. So it was, it's such a weird thing. Like does the DMCA, because the minute we get beyond the DMCA, that means that they're actually legally liable and responsible for what they're doing. With the DMCA, it's just like, hey, bad user, bad user. And that's why I think they can't respond to anything, even if it's legit, maybe even if they wanted to do it, because it would just open up this can of worms. Of course, I'm probably out there, but does that make any sense to you? Or what do you think about the DMC? It makes perfect sense. It would cost them more money to, to, I mean, if you do it, like you said, if you do it for one, you have to do it for everybody. Right. And they're just not going to. They're not going to do it, especially when you have a creator that has 4 million followers and is doing that. I love the connection of people that we have. And to your, I love your putting the human into humanity. That's always been my like heart is that this is a really amazing way to connect people. But we need some protection systems. We need yeah. to understand that. Yeah, okay. And LinkedIn is a business thing. Does it matter? I mean, I can hear all the arguments and, and I, I don't, in fact, I was shocked. I put up a poll. Do you care if it's human content or AI? And I couldn't, God, the apathy was insane. No one cared. Okay. I'm good, whatever. And we're all social media people. So it's sort of like, we are not the ones who should be asked that question, right? We, we know the game. We're too cynical. What if you could take this? I mean, hello, we have AI. What if AI could, oh, wait, a, help people. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Like the whole pitch of AI is we're going to replace people. It's going to eat us and kill us, which is like their wet dream of the dystopian future. And it's like, you know, it's really funny. If you actually trusted AI to run everything, it would throw out all this manipulation and crap if it was actually like Spock. If it actually was able to be what we say it's going to be, 
it wouldn't allow any of this to happen. And I'm such a dreamer, but I really believe that there's such a power like AI would actually, would it destroy us or would it stop us from destroying ourselves as a possibility? And that's what I see with what you're doing is even in the little ways, man, it matters. And I really appreciate yeah. the work you're doing. It really does. And to your point, your story you said at the beginning, it is about your daughter. It is about that picture. It is about that human experience and how richer this could make us. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say richer because, you know, our kids are like, mom, we're rich, aren't we? And my wife will go, yes, we're filthy rich. And she'll go, we're rich in love. And then, then that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> so, yeah, it is. To be seen, loved, heard, and valued as human beings is all we ever want. It's as simple as that. And when you're focusing on the vanity part of this, it's... You're, you're being seen and heard and it stops right there. But to, to get though the full dose of feel good hormones, you need your feel good chemicals. You need, you need to be seen, loved, heard and valued Yeah, as humans. 